so my name is Natalie Nart. Um, I'm 21 and I'm a multimedia artist. So that entails graphic design, photography, videography and web design. So those are the four major things that I do. Wow. Um, <laughs> um, okay, if we're starting from the very beginning, I see art like as anything that you create, like, anything that's original. So I'd say I was about nine and um, I started with writing a book and I can't really remember the storyline but it basically had to do with like divorced parents and the girl wanting them to get back together, some, something of the sort and my dad wanted me to publish it but I think I got overwhelmed at the, um, um, at the bit where everyone had to illustrate and I had to review everything I was like yeah may maybe not so I started with writing and then um, around 2007 my dad picked up an interest in photography so as he was teaching himself teaching himself the basics to photography he kind of like taught me along the way so I picked up an interest in photography so from about 2007 until now I've been interested in photography and then around 2013 that's when I picked up graphic design because as I was editing pictures I was like translating that into other forms of graphics as well so that's how I ended up in graphic design and web design I only picked up that in 2016 and that's kind of when I started everything Latch Productions. Um, I started Latch Productions because I was running out of ways to define myself creatively because when I was in high school I sang as well and I kind of DJ as well so everyone knew me as something different but I never really wanted to put myself in one box because I knew I always wanted to explore other things so I started Latch Productions, so you just know that, okay, Natalie does Latch, and under Latch, she does A, B, C, D, you know, so, yeah. It's kind of dependent on what my client wants, so it's more like my designs are crafted through what they want their visions to be. So in terms of me sitting down and saying, oh, I want to design this, it doesn't happen as often because now it's kind of my design is kind of commercialized in a way so it's dependent on what other people want but um in the two times that recently that i've gone out of like working for people it has to do with um having an urge to like shed light on things that we don't normally focus on so like the previous one was on mental health and the one before that wasn't like budding creatives in the crowd and those are two things that obviously need more attention so I'm usually inspired by what people aren't paying attention to, so I'm just looking at what needs to be said, so I think indirectly that's where I seek inspiration from. I'd say it would be my ability to adjust to whatever someone wants me to be in a sense, because there's some people who Often people are told that when you do many things you have to pick one thing and like focus on that and make that your niche and you should be known for just that one thing because concentrating on one thing as opposed to concentrating on a lot of things turns out better for a lot of people because you're able to like have tunnel vision on one thing but I feel like what makes me fairly different to other creatives is my ability to you know, shift my ton of vision in various fields and to be able to call myself different things in different times, in different places. I think I learned that I was more patient than I thought, than I initially thought myself to be because obviously with stuff like design, in terms of designing for other people, you have to accommodate your opinions as well as other people's opinions and usually at times where you think you're done with an assignment you're not done you just started <laughs> you know that kind of thing when you think you might have made maybe five revisions five revisions can turn to 25 revisions but throughout the entire time that you're receiving feedback you have to keep your cool 
and I think that's the main thing that I've learned like patience and like working with people literally like communicating with people in a manner that doesn't always reveal your you know inner emotions all in the name of being professional that kind of thing um the main thing would be simplicity i think across the board every time i watch something on logos or even like generally the best logos are the ones that are simple and usually when clients come to me with like you know extra stuff that kind of veer away from their purpose i think what makes me fairly different to other people at my level is how um, I'm able to persuade clients that you know maybe we should take this off and maybe take that off. Not necessarily, not necessarily like break down the whole thing, but just try to communicate the purpose of the logo and how beneficial it would be for it to be simple. So I think the main thing for me would be simplicity. Once again, my ability to listen to people. I think that's often where the disconnect happens when you don't listen to people. Like, um, sometimes people come to me and they have an idea that I know wouldn't work from the beginning. But in order to kind of push your ideas in, you have to kind of accommodate, accommodate their ideas so they're more open to listening to you. And, um, Another boundary that I feel like I've had to push is having to work between Ghana and England because obviously I'm here for uni and I kind of live here but I also live in Ghana as well so it's having to um, you know accommodate moving back and forth between two countries and trying to establish myself in both places because eventually I plan to move back to Ghana so I don't want to move back to Ghana and no one knows who I am so I'm um, making, you know, tiny steps and tiny adjustments to make sure that when I move back home, they'd kind of already have a fair idea of who I am and I'd have something to, you know, fall back on. Living here for long. <laughs> because I think that's my biggest fear. Because before I move back to Ghana, my plan is to work here for a few years before I go back. And I think I have like a latent fear in me that tells me that I might get carried away here and I might work here for a lot longer than I intended. And I know it might be beneficial in the sense that if I work for longer here, obviously I might get to a higher rank and I might have a higher pay that would, that would make it easier for me to move back. But at the same time, Ghana's at the stage where, well, at least Accra's at the stage where creatives are suddenly getting a lot more attention and we're suddenly going through this you know very fast you know revolution of how arts are manufactured and disseminated in Accra and if I move back just a bit later than I intended I might miss out on that transition and I feel if I move back after that transition it might be a lot harder to establish myself in that whole wave and yeah that's one boundary that I feel would be you know it would really throw me off if I you know succumb to it <laughs> okay. I'm not the only artist in my family my sister's an artist like she paints and stuff so ever since we were younger she's always been the main artist in the house literally there's no there's no wall in our house in Ghana that doesn't have you know a painting of my sister's and I spent a lot of years you know obviously questioning myself and questioning my art because my art is almost like a digital version of hers and in terms of trying to please older crowds it's a lot harder to convince someone over the beauty of a picture as opposed to the beauty of a painting so um i found myself holding back a lot in terms of what i shared the art the kind of art that i shared with older age groups and who I would share the art with in Ghana. So I felt like I was resisting my art because I was thinking too much about how that would be translated or appreciated in comparison to my sister. 
who you know had more traditional or who has more traditional talent in terms of art. I think the main thing for that is first of all not being entitled to any form of support from anyone. You know, I often find that on the TL on Twitter, people always complain about how their friends don't support them or they don't retweet their tweets, they don't, you know, make recommendations and all of that. I mean, I understand that and all, but for me it's like if we have to force someone to support you then that's not really support. They should be able to um, detach your work away from you and want to retweet a tweet because they like the picture, not because Natalie posted it, that kind of thing. And um, obviously my parents help, my sister helps. I have one friend, Nigel. He's like my staple um, critic for my pictures and all that. He's the one that I normally work on projects with. And my boyfriend is also quite supportive in terms of handling the emotional bits of clients like obviously you can't lash out on a client <laughs> but you can like be like cool with them but obviously just go and blow up <laughs> on someone else and that's well unfortunately his you know um duty or whatever but in terms of support i feel like my greatest support system should be myself because obviously humans can be humans and you know I feel like it's important to establish that support with yourself until you start demanding it from other people. I would say try as much as you can to know yourself first because all of these disciplines come with um, different limitations and challenges. Like if you're a web designer, chances are you're spending 80% of the time by yourself without the client so you don't really have to have a lot of interactions with people as opposed to if you chose to be a event photographer for example there's one thing knowing how to use the camera and all of those things but it's another thing to be um, walking around without sitting for 12 hours straight shooting a wedding shooting the reception shooting the lunch making sure that you get all the key moments it's something that you have to prepare your mind for and prepare your body for. It's not just about the art, it's about all the other practicalities that come with it. And each field comes with different, you know, requirements and you have to know yourself as a person and consider all of those facets before, you know, you dive right into it because it can literally just throw you off entirely. So I would say know yourself, well, try as much as you can to know yourself and use those qualities that you've discovered to, you know, translate that into any art that you feel you want to go into. My art is... Natalie. <laughs>